Welcome back to the channel guys, Ed Bud here with an update on my half marathon training from this week. I want to say a big hello to all those new subscribers. There are tons of you this week. I really do appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Before we kick off the half marathon training update, I've got a question to ask my good friends and buddies out there, all the viewers of the channel. I'm very interested to know which shoe you would like me to review next. I've been through some of the major big players over the last few months, Pegasus Turbo 2s, Nike Vaporfly Next Percent. We've looked at the Beacons, we've looked at the Adios 4s, they're currently in the rotation. Which shoe would you like me to review next? Please hit me up in the comments below and tell me which shoe you want me to test and why. I'll collate together all of those comments and views and select a shoe to purchase to review next for you guys, my good friends and buddies. So Sunday saw a long run of 13 miles. I was actually feeling pretty good throughout the run. Managed to keep the pace fairly consistent throughout. I had a target pace of seven minutes 45, which is roughly about a minute off of the target pace that I have for the half marathon in Salisbury at the very end of this month. The half marathon is run by Immortal Sport. You can still enter if you want to. Please have a look at the link up here. I'll also put it into the description if you feel you want to have a go at a fantastic event. Immortal Sport do some fantastic events. Always well run, always lots of crowd support, and best of all, there's always a fantastic technical t-shirt or medal. So please do check out the links here and below. I did stop off for water at halfway on that 13 mile run. I kind of did a loop coming back to the house, had some water to hydrate a little bit and then took off again for another loop. So please do allow me that slight indiscretion in terms of pace. I was pretty much there, but I had a little stop off halfway for some water. Really beautiful weather that morning, nice and chilly and crisp when I first went out. And then as the run progressed, the sun decided to make an appearance in the sky and gave me some glorious sunshine. So a really, really pleasant run, really ideal conditions for me. Split seemed a bit screwed up on Strava, but I've placed up on the screen my Apple workouts readings from that run, and they seem a little bit more reasonable and logical. Did feel a little fatigued around about eight miles. There were a couple of enforced stops due to traffic along that loop, which cost me a little bit of time, but I see these runs as strength building activities rather than time trials. Finished the run, the last three miles, very strongly under target pace. So really pleased with that one. I had a rest day on the Monday to replenish that leg fuel. In fairness, the legs felt like lead, very, very heavy bronze feel like they had been filled with lead on the Monday. So needed a bit of a rest day. This meant doubling up on the Tuesday, double run day, you know I love those. Decided to pull out the Pegasus 35 turbos for a nice, easy three miles although it wasn't really that easy at seven minutes 47 per mile those shoes really really move you do need to exercise caution with those good friends and buddies if you're going to try to do some type of easy miles or recovery miles they just make you want to run fast they felt really nice very different to those pegasus turbo twos which have come out recently but still a great shoe and i feel there's some more miles left in those so i'll rinse and eek some more miles out of those over the next few weeks. Kept the heart rate nice and low though. So even though I kind of felt like I was going a little faster than I should have been, heart rate still remained nice and low. Though I'm not too sure how much confidence I have in the heart rate monitoring scheme and abilities of the Apple Watch. This is only a version two. I perhaps need to upgrade soon. I see that there's a version five coming out um, so maybe that's something I'll look into and something that can be easily switched out without my wife getting too upset with me, perhaps. Hmm. Is it worth the risk? Is it worth the risk? Before I forget, some quick shout outs to local runners. I want to say hi to Ben Duke. I know he's been increasing his mileage recently. Well done, Ben. Keep up the good work. Also to Alan Chadbone. Alan's been a long time supporter of the channel. Alan. Fantastic, well done on that personal best over the 5k distance this week. And of course, all my good friends and buddies at the Yeovil Town Road Running Club. Please do comment below if you're using the Apple Watch to monitor that sort of data on your activities and your running. Tell me about how accurate you think it is. There's all sorts of other apparatus out there that I can try 
Again, maybe that's something that I can incorporate into some future videos. So later that day, I dug out the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. It was intervals time, and I've got to say, I really, really love those training sessions. I love running fast at the moment. It does feel very exhilarating. I find it very hard to pull back, put the brakes on, put the handbrake on, and do those slower miles. I really do love running fast and feeling that inertia. I also love the psychological barriers that you have to break down with that interval training. When you've done the first two intervals, things are feeling tough, things are feeling hard. I really like getting through, breaking through that barrier and completing those runs, getting the intervals done. You feel very accomplished at the end of those sessions. So today saw five repetitions of 1.2 kilometers with about 200 meters of recovery in between. Those repetitions were to be at my 5K pace. I've got to be honest, I didn't quite get there. I struggled a little bit on reps three and four, managed to make up for it on reps one, two, and five. Saying that, rep four was bang on about six minutes 51, which is obviously that target pace for me during the half marathon. So I was way off my 5K pace, so I can go much faster than that, but it kind of felt achievable round about that pace at that 6.51. So I think I'm getting there. I think the training is working. It's getting a little bit more reachable each time. So as typical to some of the sessions I've been working on, those intervals were bookended by about 1.3 miles of warm up and warm down. That brought the session up to about seven miles, which is ideal really, and exactly what I was looking for. Overall, I think the average was about seven minutes, three per mile. So spot on. I had seven miles steady planned for the next day, but then I remembered I had entered myself into the last of the Yeovilton 5k series races. So not wanting to veer off the plan too much, I decided I'd incorporate those three miles, three, three, three miles into a seven mile kind of session with 1.5 miles warm up before. Again, I hit about seven minutes per mile on that warm up. Uh, going around a track, you seem to be able to go a little bit faster. Great to see so many Yeovil Town Road Running Club members out there supporting the 5K. It was in memory of a runner who unfortunately and sadly passed away, Pete Jakeman. I didn't know Pete personally, but all of the runners who did know him said he was a fantastic guy, incredibly supportive of everybody, regardless of their abilities. So hit the race, came in around about 20 minutes, 12, something like that. Relatively happy with that performance. I'd obviously done quite a fast warm up and I knew I had some extra miles to do after that back on the track. Cadence registered around 179 steps per minute, which is pretty much bang on what everybody seems to suggest you should have. So not my fastest time, but certainly an average of around six minutes, 23 per mile, isn't really too shabby at all. I think over the miles it was six minutes 20, 6.31 and 6.26. So relatively happy with that sort of performance. Once I'd recovered, hit the track again for 2.5 miles, bang on seven minutes 30. So got those steady miles in with some faster stuff in the middle. I could guess you could almost call it kind of like a threshold run. Seven miles with sort of three miles at a above half marathon pace kind of speed. So really happy with that. Shock, horror. I had some rubbing on my left ankle from the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent. I'll throw some images up on screen so you can see exactly where it was. I think it might have been to do with the fact I was going around the track, did a number of laps, um, constantly going in an anti-clockwise motion. So my left foot was kind of perhaps rubbing a little on the very edge of the shoe. It was kind of just underneath the ball of my ankle. It was enough to make it bleed a little onto the shoe. I was a little bit surprised and couldn't quite understand what had happened. Initially, I didn't have any pain, but certainly when I took the shoe off, I could see that there was some rubbing. I've been using the Stance tab socks, so the lower ones, um, but they still covered that area. So not entirely sure what happened there. Maybe uh, some moisture, maybe some sweat or something just below the ball of the foot. Maybe that caused the rubbing, don't know. It washed out, no problem. So we haven't got any lasting stains there on those bright green beasts. Gotta say, woke up the next morning, the legs felt fantastic. Running in those shoes for around about seven miles really did leave me feeling relatively good in terms of the legs. No sort of delayed uh, soreness within any of the muscles. Tasty Chinese food was consumed and much sleep was had. The following day, I had a seven mile run in the books with some hills 
as I headed out on my usual path, I ran into some of the Yeovil Town Road Running Club members, Tim Wills and Richard Clayton. They were both up for doing some hills, so rather than go out on my own solo, I decided to tag along with those guys. So we did some between 100 to 200, perhaps to 300 meter inclines. We did some repeats of those at different types of intensity. So sort of low, medium and high intensity. Really great to go out running with those guys. They've got some races coming up this weekend. So I wish them all the best on those. I think Tim's heading out to do one of the Flying Fox races and Richard's heading over to Bristol for the half marathon there. Very big one that, lots of people. So I wish you the best of luck guys. So a productive, very successful week of training up to this point and managed to use a multitude of shoes, which is only a good thing, right? Good to get back out the original Pegasus Turbos and also the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. Lots of miles in those now, still holding up well, still feel really, really good. Okay guys, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for making it through to the very end of the video. I also want to give you my heartfelt thanks for subscribing to the channel. It really does mean a lot to me. Please remember to hit that bell for notifications, give the video the thumbs up, comment below about how you get on monitoring your training if you have an Apple Watch or any other sort of smartwatch. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you. Remember guys, never leave home without your pocket bars.